Welcome to our new cooking show, Preparing the Last Supper. Today, follow us as we prepare the five-star specialty, Israelite Law. Cheers. Uh, good morning. Glad to be with you guys today. First thing we're going to need to whip up some Israelite Law is a good old-fashioned cookbook. Archaeologists have discovered thousands of documents from the ancient Near East that records legal decisions made by judges spanning over 2,000 years. These provide a great insight into everyday life. One question to consider before we begin is that today, the Bible has hundreds of laws and commandments that society as a whole does not follow as law. Can laws from biblical texts and ancient documents reveal things about the cultures that produces them? In all of these documents, there is not a single ruling in one of the cases that is based on a law in one of the existing law collections. You see, unlike the approach used in society today, where legal decisions are based on a written law, in the ancient Near East, judges relied on an oral traditions to make their judgment. Mosaic law, or the law of Moses, primarily referring to the Torah, was relatively unknown to the masses after their creation. We're going to use a mix of documents and ancient texts about ancient life to make some Israelite law. With that being said, let's get cooking. To start, one cup ancient legal decisions based on traditions, not legal documents. Next, add a tablespoon of Mosaic law being considered divine, outlining blessings and cursings as consequences. Now, mix in some societies not following these laws, being exiled, suffering military defeat, they're naturally gonna look for a reason for why they're suffering. We're gonna let that sit for a while and see that Mosaic law becomes central and increasingly more well-documented as religious leaders advise populations to follow. Now, these laws of Moses are going to be seen as more and more timeless in sharing God's perfection, separated from human thought and customs. Now, miraculously, it actually did not melt, considering it's a plastic container. So we're going to let it cool off a little bit. Let's sit down and talk about what we've done so far. Mosaic law is claimed to be of divine origin in the Hebrew Bible. This is stressed through the different blessings laid out that people would experience if they follow the law and curses they would suffer if they were to break them. This means that it was only around 597 and 586 BCE when religious leaders began reflecting on why God let them eat large military defeats and be exiled. After then, many concluded it was because they failed to uphold the laws of God. Religious leaders began stressing Mosaic law to other leaders and people in power. This would have a profound effect because scribes began studying, copying, and teaching the laws to preserve their religion and culture. Jewish people would begin to see this Mosaic law as more and more timeless, sharing God's perfection. Mosaic law would become central to Jewish life and the culture of many towns and cities, hence why we can study Israelite law and interpret so much about the culture. Artie, let's get back to our dish. In these two separate bowls, we're going to look at the two types of mosaic laws, starting with the apodictic laws. Now, these are the laws of you do this and you don't do that law. So the best example of this is another dish that you may know as the Ten Commandments. In our other bowl, we're going to whip up some caustic laws. These laws detail if this happens, then this consequence will follow. Now, we're going to take both of these bowls and we're going to toss them in the main dish. A lot of biblical laws and commandments are easy to understand and follow today, such as don't commit adultery. Others can be confusing, and we might not understand. Israelites believe that God gave them the law to represent what is best, and that they should obey it whether it's understood or not. This is why there are laws and commandments that don't make sense to us today. However, they probably made sense within the different customs and traditions of Israelites back then. So we're just going to let this sit a little bit, and we'll be right back. With apodictic and caustic laws, it's hard to apply them to today's life. How do you adjust divine law written for a time period and culture that is much different than today? Well, here's the thing. There's no easy answer, which is why everyone's dish may look a little bit different by the time it comes out of the oven. Speaking of dishes, let's go and check on ours. Man, RT, look at this. This turned out fantastic. I bet you can tell a lot about Israelite law by tasting it. Let's go and get a taste test. Let's hope someone's out there. Oh, hey, Billy, Billy, come here, come here, come here, come here. So, RD and I just spent like hours in the kitchen and we just whipped up this dish. Is that Israelite really, like, law? Well, yes, it is. My favorite! All right, that wraps up today for you guys. Uh, make sure to tune in next week when we prepare a dish for 5,000 with just five loaves of bread and two pieces of fish. 
Catch you guys next time.